this gallery displays a wide variety of vertebrates, a group we have already discussed in depth. Let us dwell for a moment on the vertebra that gave this group its name. Here in the skeletons of the ostrich and the orangutan and the dinosaur, we can study them in detail. The most obvious point is that each of the animals has many vertebrae that look similar, but not identical. Then we have some that are more different. All of these animals are thus composed of repetitive units. For example, the neck vertebrae have a certain form. Further back in the body, we see vertebrae with ribs. And finally, we see another form of vertebrae, those of the tail. In spite of the differences among them, they have common characteristics. It is clear that they are based on the same form. At a closer look, we will find additional resemblances among the different animals. Let us have a look at the limbs. Limbs appeared in vertebrates for the first time 375 million years ago, in fish that lived in shallow water. From those fish evolved amphibians that could walk on dry land, and from them all other terrestrial vertebrates, reptiles, birds and mammals. Limbs have the same basic design in all vertebrates. They all consist of one bone connected to the torso. To this bone two bones are connected, at the knee and the elbow. To these two bones many more bones are connected, bones of the foot or the palm. Evolution is not planning ahead, it is random. Once a feature proved beneficial, compared to existing alternatives, it might spread in the population. On the basis of this new feature, new ones appear, randomly again. This is a bit like the random walk of a drunkard. As long as he doesn't fall into the ditch and becomes extinct, he will get somewhere. Every new place he gets to is based on his random previous location. This sounds like a rather messy and wasteful approach, but given enough time, it created all the amazing forms we see around us. One of the beautiful examples of such evolution is the resemblance of limbs. In all mammals, the fingers are highly similar. Some got longer or shorter or got a specific role. In bats, the fingers got long and thin and formed wings. In moles, they got long and crooked to enable burrowing. In the whale, the fingers formed flippers. In monkeys, they formed a hand with a thumb functional for grasping. Very different structures for very different functions, but all with the same basic design of a limb with five fingers. In some cases, some of the fingers got completely lost. Not just vertebrates are composed of repetitive units. Here in the arthropod gallery, we can see insects, spiders, crabs and millipedes. These are all composed of repetitive units. The name arthropod means jointed legs. Indeed, not only their legs, but their entire body is built of jointed segments. Some of these units are very similar, like of this millipede. In contrast, in this crab, the segments are very different. One is a leg, another one is an antenna, and the third is a pincer. The different segments can change size in absolute terms, as well as in relation to each other. In this manner, it is possible to generate almost any conceivable form just by quantitative changes, without inventing new segments. In the next section, we will see how genetic regulation is enabling these dynamic changes. Okay.